I beg your pardon, but have you a card? Why, no. I'm sorry, I can't let you in, ma'am. Do we have to be fingerprinted? You must have a card, miss. Well, I have a birthmark on my right hip. Well, unless it's a tattooed invitation, it won't get you in. I thought you said this was a gambling ship. Oh, no, no, no. This is a private yacht. Quite a party going on. Oh, yes, a group of specially invited guests are going on a cruise around the harbor. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Roberts? Come along, hey. Jack. Just go. We'll go to place. Say, where'd she say she had a birthmark? Could you excuse me, please? Number 24. Good evening, Mr. Roberts. Feel lucky tonight? That's why I'm here, Hilya. My dear, will you excuse me? I'll meet you at the bar later. If he's as lucky here as he is in love, he'll sink this boat. Does he usually pick the right numbers? Didn't make any mistake about it tonight. You wouldn't fool a girl, would you? Not unintentionally. What would I do for a girl like you? I've heard you were a lady killer. Is this how you do it? No, it's all done with mirrors. <laughs> I think I like you better than I think I do. Well, that calls for a chocolate soda. Ice water. Here you are, my dear. I've been taking good care of her for you, sir. Thanks. What do you think, Mrs. DeLacy? You going to win tonight? Mm-hmm. If seven is still my lucky number. Number two? It was almost a natural. Yeah, but her husband's a big customer. Exactly. The customer's uh, wife is always right. Well, if I were going to be indiscreet, I'd be more discreet about it. Thanks for the tip. Oh, I thought Mac told you to look out for me. I'm looking out for you, all right. Come here, I want to have a talk with you. Now look, Gloria, you know what I owe Mac. And I think you have a pretty good idea what you owe him. Oh, Mac's got no kick coming as far as I'm concerned. All right, then, why don't you leave it that way? Oh, I like him well enough. But I don't love him. That's a little tired from the time, trying to make him feel I do. And I'm always thinking of someone else. I thought you didn't play with loaded dice. Skill, if you please. Oh, all in the way you roll them, huh? Yeah, and Max on the level. The games are all straight, too. But I'm beginning to think they're the only things around here that are. Oh. Don't try to be so noble, Ronnie. That's the one thing my mother left me, was my sense of honor. Yeah. Well, my mother didn't leave me much. But she left it all in the right places. Hello, 
Oh, Braden. Oh, glad to see you back, Mr. McPhee. Here, put these in glorious cabins for me. Nice. Well, how's it going? A big crowd aboard. Oh, you? that's fine. I suppose we'll be getting underway soon, huh? We better, before the crowd gets way under. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, I'm glad you're back. I'm glad to be back, kid. How are things at the Yankee Clipper? Oh, Clippers? big, big. The best business in town. How's everything here? I've been getting a great play. <laughs> That's fine. Well, honey, you been lonesome? Oh, honey, I'm always lonesome when you're away. <laughs> here, I got a surprise for you. Close your eyes now. Tight. Look. Oh, Mac. Oh, Mac, you're an angel. <laughs> Cupid must have shot you with a machine gun. Oh, the man said it was an old family heirloom. How'd I look in the 400? Like one of the zeros. Oh, look, snakes, when I pick them, they're thoroughbreds. And that does for you, too, kid. Thanks, <laughs> Max. You know, I've been thinking, I can't divide my time between two places and take care of all the things that I want to. So I'm going to take in a partner to run this end for me. A partner? That's what I said. Somebody I can trust. Somebody who will look after my interests. Oh, now, Mac, listen. And starting tomorrow, I'm cutting you in on the take. Oh, you're going to do that. Oh, oh, wait a minute, Mac. You've done enough for me already. Why, if it hadn't been for you, I'd still been in taking thin dimes in a carnival lot. Forget it, kid, forget it. From tomorrow on, you're in. I, I don't know what to say. Well, now, look, here's the setup. Now, I'll run the Yankee Clipper and, uh, Gloria here, she can head the floor show there. Oh, but I... You always said the sea air hurt your voice. Oh, I was just getting used to it. Well, anyway, uh, I think your voice makes a gambler as nervous. Well, that's a nice thing to say. Oh, no, honey, I, I, I really didn't mean that that way. I... Well, now that I have an interest in this place, the first thing I'm going to do is ball myself out for not being on the job. See you later, boss. Ah, uh, partner. Partner. <laughs> <laughs> no, honey. Darling, I've got to get back to my next number. Oh, forget it. Won't I'll you? see you later, darling. Ronnie. Give me the deal. Of course I'll deal for you, Mrs. Smythe. And nice of you to send for me. Hello. Take the deal. Who are those two up there? Never saw them before. Enjoying yourself, gentlemen? Oh, yes. Nice place you have here. My name's Hillier. Meet Mr. Bates, Mr. Hillier. How are you, Mr. Hillier? How do you do? Mine's Blake. J.W. Blake? That's right. <laughs> Glad to have you aboard, Mr. Blake. Thank you. Hey, Mac. Oh, what's on your mind? There are a couple of strange birds outside, and one of them says he's J.W. Blake. Well, that's all right. I know him. So do I. But Blake's been in Europe for six months. Where did you dig up that lookout? What do you mean, Braden? Why, he, uh, he worked at the Golden Slipper before they raided it. He knows all the big shots. Then he'd know Blake. I'm sure he would. Get him in here. I've sent for him. Wanted to see me, boss? Yes, Burton. When you worked at the Golden Slipper, you knew J.W. Blake, of course. Blake? 
No, I don't think so. I've seen him there a dozen times. He must have passed you. Oh, not me. Not that I remember. Hey, you can't come on board here. This is a private yacht. Oh, no. Take charge of him. All right, everybody. You're all under arrest. <laughs> What's the idea? Are you trying to pin something on me? If you framed me with the DA's office, look, we're being raided now. Mac, what happened? You pulled this gun on me and I... I tried to take it away from him. Do you expect the cops to believe that? It's the truth. They've been trying to get something on you for weeks. I guess they've got it now, all right. Yeah, they'll close us up, and they'll give you the works. Are you shooting things up, McPhee? Hello, boys. No, it was just an accident. We've heard that one before. Where's the gun? How should I know? He hasn't got it. Search everybody on the ship. Get that gun! Get the search line. There he is. Come back around and fire. Cover the docks. Call out the harbor patrol. to be awakened by a noisy drunk? Oh, wouldn't I? I'd love it. Is that you, Alex? Where's my old friend, Alex? Watch those sea legs, Skipper. Look out! Ah! Uh, you see, if I was sober, I'd probably have fallen and broken my neck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's funny. Oh. I thought you were Alex. Oh, that's all right. I, I'm a friend of Alex. 
Any friend of Alex is a friend of mine. Can I help you uh, show your friend home? Where to? South, Southwest. It's uh, too bad you didn't get here before Alec went out on his tuna boat. He's gone away? Oh, that's just my luck. I sent him a card from Seattle telling him I was coming. I got you, Peg. I bet your bill. Pretty narrow, <laughs> boy. Oh, yes, Bill. Sean, <laughs> meet Bill. How do you do? How do you do? Easy now, Dad. Oh, look at it. We live right over there. All right, let's go. Here we go. <laughs> you could make a nice home for retired tightrope walkers. <laughs> Anything the matter with your sea legs, sailor? Oh, me? No. I'm at home with any kind of a deck. <laughs> hey! You folks live here? We do. What's the matter, officer? Have you seen anything of a man in a tuxedo? We just got here. Have you, Bill? No. What did he be doing around here? Is it a wedding or a wake? Well, it's a wake for someone. There was a man killed out on that gambling ship. It's a great neighborhood we're living in, with murder going on all around you. Dad, you'd better get to bed. <laughs> just be ashamed to wear it the way I feel on sleep. <laughs> uh, good night, Skipper. Sleep tight. I will, Zach. I'll be seeing you in the morning, Bill. Well, I may leave early in the morning. Why not drop anchor here, Bill? You'll never find a better place to live. No landlords to be given you, and no taxes to pay. Lots <laughs> of fresh air and plenty of sunshine. That's the best inducement I've had yet. Well, <laughs> good night, dear. <laughs> good night. <laughs> good night. Uh, how long did you say Alec would be gone? That depends on how the tune are running. I'm sure he wouldn't mind if you used his place. Well, would you? Of course not. We're very neighborly here. Well, then maybe I'll stay. I have a hunch the book was right when it said, uh, love thy neighbor. Good night. Good night. Blow him down. Uh, yes, sir. Any friend of Alex is a friend of mine. Yes, yes, Father, I know. Keep out of this. This is a gentleman's argument. Blow, blow, blow the man down. Dad, you've been gambling again. Where did you get the money? I uh, thought perhaps I could help you. Help? Yeah, I helped put your father to sleep. I don't think Dad will need any help. Aren't you afraid I might be a burglar? If you were, it would be too late. You don't mean to say you've been robbed here. Dad's robbed every payday. It's his weakness. Oh, well, his weakness can be made his strength. He just works it right. I'll have to take your dad's hand and show him a few pointers. Are you a gambler, too? Oh, who, me? Oh, no. No, I never gamble. Uh, unless it's a sure thing. A sure thing with Dad, too. He's always sure of losing. That must be kind of tough on you, isn't it? Oh, I manage. I just pretend that every day's Friday, as long as the fish hold up. Well, you shouldn't have any trouble catching anything with your lines. Shouldn't I? No. I swallowed the bait the first time I saw you, and I'm considered a pretty good catch. If you're so interested in my lines, I'll show them to you. Huh? They're right out here. Well... Goodbye, sailor. Goodbye? If you're leaving in the morning, we're not likely to meet again. I was just thinking. It'd be a crazy thing to do, but 
I guess people do crazy things in places like this. They just act natural. Good. That's just what I thought. What wouldn't I do for a girl like you? If Hilda didn't kill Braden, you're not making it any easier for yourself trying to cover him. Why do you take the gun and break away? Well, why don't you ask him? That's our business. If he didn't do it, he'll have to talk to save his own neck. And that won't save yours. Really, Mr. Shaw, that's quite a lot. You can't pin this thing on me, and you know it. Lock him up. You, uh, haven't asked me. But I prefer a room with a southern exposure. Come on. Uh-oh. Mustn't touch. What are you after? Did he tell you? Oh, he says, have you seen anything of a man in a tuxedo around here? No, says I. I haven't seen a man in a tuxedo since the night I was married. <laughs> Thanks, girlie. I'll do as much for you someday. What good would it do you? You'd only eat it. And what would you have left? The shell. That's right. I'll swap you this for the egg. To swap? Do you want another egg tomorrow? Well, we'll take that up later. Okay, Bill.
I just couldn't help it last night. You look so pretty and smile so sweetly and... You always go around kissing girls who look pretty and smile sweetly? No, but I thought I'd make an exception in your case. I never make exceptions. I found that out. You must be hungry after your swim. Uh, would you like an egg? No, thanks. Go ahead, take it. There's a lot more where this one came from. Aren't you hungry? Starved. The sea air certainly gives me an appetite. Then you eat it. Raw? Of course. They're very healthy that way. Mmm, what lovely perfume. What is it? It's the coffee boiling over. Good morning, madam. I am the Fuller Egg Man. I dropped in to demonstrate our new method of shirring eggs, with or without ham. Hopeless. <laughs> now, the first thing I'll need is a frying pan and a little piece of toast for the egg to sit on. Oh, I beg your pardon. I wouldn't have dropped in like this if I'd have known you were going to have company for breakfast. <laughs> oh, that's all right. He's a very nice neighbor. Gee, that's swell. Uh, tell me some more about this very nice neighbor who's dropping in for breakfast. He's a sailor. Big. Strong, good-looking, snacks natural. You'll find he's a lot of other nice things when you get to know him better. Well, I'm sure I will. Come in. Hello, Todd. This is the man I was telling you about. Oh, yeah. Uh, Todd, this is Bill. He's a friend of Alex. Just got in from Seattle. How are you? Well, I thought I was doing all right. How was the catch last night? Great. Too bad the skipper didn't show up. He'll be doing well if he shows up for breakfast. You better time to hurry if you're going to help us unload. I'll call him again. Thanks. Going to be around here long? Well, I thought I'd be around until Alex gets back. Then I'll be seeing you later. Yeah. Well, so long. So long. Oh, he left. Oh, uh, Dad doesn't want any breakfast. I heard some news this morning, Joan. Yes? Yeah, they're going to beach the old Victoria right after her next run. I told you this village had a future. You know, I've been thinking. I could fix the Victoria up so it'll make every other boat around here look like a tub. Are you going to? If you say the word. We agreed to wait until we were sure how we felt about each other. Well, I know how I feel. Ain't you sure of me? Oh, of course I am, Todd. I'm very fond of you, but we have time. Feeling better, Skipper? Worse. What are you chasing the kid for? And who are you? Never mind who I am. Who are you? Well, if you must know, I'm a truant officer. But that little brat hasn't been in school in a month. What business is it of yours? It's plenty business of mine. Because I happen to be uh, the kid's father. Oh, well, then maybe you can tell me why the boy hasn't been in school. Sure I can. He's just getting over the mumps. He won't miss another day all year, I'll guarantee you that. Well, you'd better. There are too many little criminals and wharf rats growing up in this country, and All I... All right. You can save the lecture. Mickey won't give any more trouble, I'll promise you that. Well, see that he don't. <laughs> Come here. So you've been playing hooky, huh? Well, I got an awful teacher, and she always picks on me. No, I can understand that. But you heard what that man said about little criminals growing up, didn't you? Yeah. Well, you want people to look up to you when you grow up, don't you? Have a nice job and make your mother proud of you? Sure I do, Bill. A lot of other poor boys have become great men. But you, when you grow up, you won't know anything about arithmetic, and, and you'll be a bad businessman. Oh, no, I won't. 
Why not? Because I just got two dollars for an egg. How? I hopped your knife. Get out of here. <laughs> you must be hungry after that long speech. Mr. O'Flaherty. Well, I was just giving Mickey a little fatherly advice. It's nice of you to take an interest in him. I like kids. I hope to be a father myself someday. <laughs> Benny, suppose you accept this in advance for Father's Day. Oh, thanks. We've tried that, Mr. Shaw. We've tried everything you could think of. And I tell you, the cards have been... It's to be 12 hours since Tom Braden was shot, and you haven't uncovered a trace of Hilliard or the gun that did the shooting. Well, we've had some tough breaks. Don't talk to me about breaks. The court has just okayed McPhee's bond on that gambling charge. Bring him in. Come on. Oh, good morning, gentlemen. McPhee, I've decided not to hold you for trial. Yes, sir, so I hear. And it's darn nice of you too, Shaw, to let me walk out, especially with an election coming on. You figure you're running in luck, don't you? The percentage is always with the House. Nothing seems to work right around here. <laughs> Statement for the Times, McPhee. Yeah, where's What are you going to do with the yard? Ah, uh, no, boys. I've nothing to say. I've talked myself out. I'll say you did. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, where's Gloria? Why isn't she here? She's at the Yankee Clipper ball. It's rehearsing. Ah, uh, she could have come. Oh, you forget her career. I'm a career. The Yankee Clipper, step on it. Shining bright, makes me bat my eyes and make those skeeters bite. Floating down the deep, dark river, living the life of a king. Bullfrogs setting on an old green leaf, croaking words of wisdom to those pollywogs beneath. Floating down the deep, dark river, living the life of a king. All right, Bobby, that's enough. Okay, bud. All right, girls, break it up. That's it. All right, Sam, come on, get going. You're always talking about rehearsals. I thought you would at least be there to meet me. Oh, now, don't you start. I'm so tired and upset now that the moment anyone swears, I start to sing. <laughs> hey, you can't do that. You can't go away and leave me here all alone. Oh, want a job? Sure. Well, that depends on where it is. I'm just going out to the lobster boat. I don't care if you go at the end of the world, as long as we're alone. <laughs> hey, where's the motor? It's an Armstrong. Takes two hands to run it. Well, put it away, Skipper. Get ahead for the moment. <laughs> it's easier if you take longer strokes. Say, hey, how far out are these lobster pots? Oh, just a few knots. Well, let me know when we pass Han Wu. I've got a letter to mail. <laughs> you are going to take me to the end of the world. Well, it still goes. As soon as I get a new pair of hands. You said you were a sailor. I am. In a way, that is, I... You see, I was the ship's cook. Oh. Are you a good cook? Am I? <laughs> I can make pies like Father used to make. <laughs> Son of a gun ate up all the cheese. Oh, why 
turn to take him out. Uh, where's the fork? Fork? Well, certainly. I always take my lobster out with a fork. That's the way to get a lobster out of the pot. What are you doing that for? What well, isn't ripe yet? It's still green. Silly! All lobsters are green. Green? I thought they were red. And you said you were a cook. Well, I am. I'm a, a pastry cook. Well, I may give you a real job someday. You know, I've always wanted to have a small restaurant at the beach. I served the very best shore dinners money could buy. I have a special way of preparing fish, too. I know I could make a go of it. You could make a go of anything. I've dreamed of it for ever so long. You see, Dad lost everything gambling. That's why I had to quit school. Why we're living where we are. Now I'm saving to start a little place. And I'm going to help you. <laughs> you know, I think we'd better send for the builders and have them come out and put up a place right here. Because I'm never going to be able to roll you back. <laughs> there. Now, I'll show you how I'm going to make my clam chowder when I get my short dinner restaurant. First, I put the clams in. Oh, go no further. I've guessed your secret. Well, cook, what is it? The clams. I've been eating clam chowder all my life, and I've never found a clam in it yet. Well, what's the first thing you put in your clam chowder? Oh, I'd take and break up a couple of crackers and I... You're going to be a great help. <laughs> I'm glad you realize it. Let me do something. Very well. Clean this fish. Jim McPhee, gambling baron, was released from custody today. No charges were filed against him in the slaying on board his gambling yacht. Police are seeking Ronald Hillier and the revolver used in the shooting. Hillier is about 26 years old, 5 feet 11 inches tall, and his hair is... Oh, Bill, that's terrible. Turn it off. Does it always do that? No. Only when there's something you'd like to hear. You ought to have an outside aerial. There are a lot of things we ought to have. Yeah. Well, I'm going to fix this one. What are you going to do? Uh, I'll go out and get some wire and stuff and rig up a good aerial. Can I use your phone? Sure. Oh, Mac, remember the kid you met on the carnival lot a couple years ago? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, kid. When did you blow into town? Uh, where are you living? Down at the foot of Pacific Street in the houseboat. Yeah, it's nice and quiet down here. I'm looking for something to do. Do you think you can help me out? Why, yes. Yes, I think so. Do you mind traveling? Oh, that's fine. Well, I tell you, there's uh, a friend of mine who's looking for a man to go to South America with him. I think I can fix it up for you. Not at all. You uh, think you can stick it out where you are until Saturday? Sure, I don't see why not. Matter of fact, I'm beginning to like it down here. There's one thing that's perfect. <laughs> this way. You just glide and glide.
Joan, Joan. Hello. Oh, hello, Bill. How are you? What are you reading? Uh, the world's treasury of literature. Treasury of what? Treasury of literature. That ought to improve your mind. <laughs> That's just what I was telling Tony Spadaloni. <laughs> I'm taking it over to him. He's a great one to uh, improve his mind, you know, and get ahead. I'll walk over with you. Oh, well, uh, oh, sure, come on. Or Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, Skipper. Uh, are you having a little game, Tony? Uh, see. She starts like the little game, but she gets more of big every minute. <laughs> the skipper brought over the treasury to you, Tony. I think I'm gonna need him. Uh, no, no, uh, the book I want you to read, Tony. A book? Mm -hmm. I can read the English. You gonna get aboard, skipper? Well, I think I'll try me luck once. You come in, Bill? Oh, thanks very much. I'm not much of a gambler. And the skipper oh, here... Oh, no, Bill. Just one little game. What do you say? Well, you might lose. You can't win all the time. I'm fading you. Shoot. Sure. Your hard luck. Watch it come. Five. Five oh, rewards. Come on, five. Come on, five. Hey, everybody fading me? Here she is. Five. 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 Uh, did you lose? I ain't warmed up yet. That's your lucky day, eh, Skipper? <laughs> no, Skipper, come on. You can't beat this game in the long run. Let's go. What do you know about this game? Nothing, but... I guess it's never too late to learn. Oh, you'll catch on to it in no time, Bill. <laughs> you can have the dice if you want them. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean for you to roll. Oh, I see. <laughs> Go on, lad. Go I'm on, lad. You. Go on, you put up with the money down here, oh, huh? Oh, of course. <laughs> now, you talk to them, lad. I'll talk to them. Talk to them? Yeah. Well, I don't know what to say. Uh, <laughs> Hello, Dice. <laughs> Pick up your money, son. Well, do I get another chance? You shoot until yeah. we tell you to stop. I'm taking half of it. I got this part of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Kevin, he wins again. Hey, this is fun. <laughs> oh, Skipper. Oh, Mrs. O'Flaherty, is the skipper around? Oh, I, I, I think he went over to Tony's. Thanks. Talk to them, me lad. Talk to them again. I don't know what more to say to them. <laughs> Levin, that looks like a hard point to make. You made it, lad. You win again. Oh, I don't see anything <laughs> difficult about this game. <laughs> what are you doing here, skipper? Oh, no, I'm just watching the game. The skipper's clean. <laughs> you ought to see Ben Rollins. He never played before, and he has beginner's luck. <laughs> do you want to play? I got better things to do with my dough than to throw it away gambling. What are you saving for, Todd? A rainy day? Ah, he's got enough now for a cloudburst. Hey, <laughs> come on. You're holding up the game. Come on. Go on. Right, come on. Well, come on, it. seven. <laughs> Isn't that funny? All you have to do is talk to him. <laughs> and you're talking to him right to me, boy. Hey, is the game over? It's as far as I'm concerned. Well, don't you want to play anymore? Sure, if you're around here yeah. next payday. <laughs> well, <laughs> we come around next payday. <laughs> Mickey, put this in O'Brien's cabin and don't say anything about it. All right, Bill. Hello, Joan. Where did you leave Dad? Over at Tony's. Shall I get him for you? You can't do anything for me. I'll get him for you, Joan. Thanks. Todd told me everything. Joan, don't get me wrong. I won't anymore. You were going to help to take Dad in hand. Now I see what you meant. Well, I didn't get him into the game. You gambled with him, took advantage of his weakness. I was playing against the others. You had no right. They had no right. Dad, you've been gambling again, after all those promises. I'm surprised at you. You wouldn't be if you knew why I did it. 
All right, let me hear it. It must be a new one. Why, I was trying to win enough to buy you a nice present for your birthday. I wouldn't want a present that was bought with those other poor fellows' money. It wouldn't make me happy. Oh, yes, it would, because I wouldn't have told you. And what you don't know won't hurt you. Where did that come from? Don't you know? Why, uh, uh no, uh... I think I do. I owe you an apology. No, you don't. I owe you a vote of thanks. You made me think. And anyone that can make me think straight. <laughs> Maybe it's the first time you've tried it. Ouch! <laughs> John! Can I talk to you a moment, please? Hello. Of course. What can I do for you? You see, Tony... Oh, Mrs. Fadaloni. Tony loaned me this in the game this afternoon, and I forgot to give it back to him. He's not to me. No, he probably forgot. There's a lot to forgot. There's a lot to forgot. <laughs> that was nice. Thinking. Hey, Bill, come here, quick! Hang on, Mickey. I'm oh, sorry. Sure, he hasn't got you. <laughs> Stick to it, pal. You're winning. Stab it, Bill. Stick in your class. Give it a yank. What do you think this is, a sardine? <laughs> Pull it in here. Here. Uh, oh, boy. Must be a big one. <laughs> yeah, it's a man-sized job. Aw, oh, gee. You're a fine fisherman. Now, what kind of a fish is this? <laughs> I'd call it a soup and fish. Here, you don't want these dirty old clothes. Wait a I'll... minute. Look, the pants have a stripe on them. Nobody around here ever had pants like that. No, nobody around here. Where could they have come from? Tide washes up a lot of funny things. Hey, Willie, really, they belong to me. I hooked them up with my line and my bag. That's right, Todd. All right, Mickey. I don't think they'd fit me anyway. They're more bill size. You don't have them, Bill. You help me pull them up. Thanks, Mickey. Well, it's about time we're leaving. So long, Joan Darrell. Bye, Dad. Too bad you're not going along with us, Bill. <laughs> yeah, why don't you? Going to be away long? No, just tonight. We'll be back in the morning. And you won't have much use for a cook. Well, see you tomorrow. Good luck. All right. Come on, Todd. Hey, Skipper. Remember the murder on that yacht last week? Sure I do. What about it? Well, the guy the cops are looking for is a gambler, ain't he? Oh, well, why? Well, I was just thinking that our friend Bill handles those dice a little too well to be an amateur. <laughs> Beginners, look. I did the same thing when I started. Yeah, but you didn't wear a tuxedo. Come on, Skipper. He was. Come on, you've had enough. <laughs> well, Alex! Skipper, how are you? <laughs> yeah, look at her. Todd, how are you been? Did uh, you have a good trip? Yeah, the tone of us running fine like everything. Uh, we're going out tonight. Yeah? Alex, there's a friend of yours back in port. Hmm? It's Bill. He stopped at your place. But you said don't see Bill for six months. Sure, good friends. Uh, come on, I'd like to see him. So would I when he sees you. You go ahead, Skipper. I'm going back to the cabin with Alex. But, Todd, you lose your share of the catch. Yeah, I know. I'm liable to catch something more important. So long, Skipper. Well, so long. What are you doing here? Joan. You knew I my can't... father was away, that I was here alone. 
that why you came? Do you think that? What else can I think? It wasn't that. I just had to see you. Oh, Bill. I was just beginning to... To care? That's what I came to find out. I couldn't go away without seeing you. You're leaving? You may hear some things about me when I'm gone, but they're not true. Then why are you leaving? I've got to go, Joan. I've got to straighten myself out. When I do, I'm coming back for you. I love you. He ain't in here. I think I know where he is. Remember the first night I came here? Yes. Who is it? Me, John. What's he doing here? Is he bothering you? Why, no. He just came to say goodbye. Oh, too bad Bill's going, ain't it, Alex? I don't know that fella. Who is she? Well, I know who he is. He's the gambler that's wanted for murder. It's not true, is it? You bet it's true. And he ain't leaving here. Wait a minute. Stand over there, both of you. Face the wall. Don't move. Goodbye, Joan. Don't get that paper caught. I know it from the start. That guy couldn't fool me. I would never have thought that. Well, of course he did. you wouldn't. He's too smooth. And if I hadn't have known you better, I'd have thought you was falling for him. The way you stuck up for him and all. I only did it because he was alone. Alone and friendless. Well, I saw through him all right. Playing up to you so he could hide here. A lot he cared about you. Why do you say that? Because if you'd have got caught hiding a murder, you'd have been sent up too. Oh, he wouldn't. He wouldn't if I could help it. Please, Todd, don't say any more about it. All right, I'll forget him if you will. Well, you ain't very happy about it. Oh, of course I am. Don't you know that on your birthday, if you're sad, you'll be sad every day in the year? Oh, for a moment I forgot. Well, I didn't. Oh, Todd. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, I hope it'll keep good time. Oh, I'm sure it will. Gee, maybe someday you'll be looking at it and say, Todd will be home soon. I better start cooking his chow. I got another surprise for you. I'm giving you a party tonight. A party? Where? Right here on your barge. I ask all the neighbors. Oh, Todd, I don't want you to do that now, to me. Now, just leave everything to me and it'll be some party. <laughs> Thank you. 
We've got to do something. We can't let them hunt him down like a wild animal. What can I do when I don't even know where he is? Sure, what more can the boss do? Well, if I were a man, I'd do something. Yeah, if my aunt had a beard, she'd be my uncle. Now listen, Gloria, that kid can take care of himself. Yeah, it looks as if he'll have to. Say, you seem to be more worried about Ronnie than you are about me. Oh, I'm Max. You know I'm not... Come in. Mr. Crane wishes to see you, sir. All right. I couldn't. They kept me on the go all day. 15 Breaker Street, room 5, second floor. Have you got that? Tell the boss. Okay, honey. Right away. What wouldn't I do for a boy like you? Well, what's the trouble, Jess? Where's Gloria? Search me. You better tell him to switch to a dance. Okay, excuse me. Where's Mac? Isn't he coming? I didn't tell him where you were. Why not? Mac's letting you down. What are you talking about? He wouldn't do that. I'm taking this rap for him. Well, I'm not going to let you any longer. If he's not loyal to you, I am. Hey, what are you driving at? Ronnie, you know how I've always felt about you. There's still time. We can get out of all this. What do you mean, we? We're sailing tonight for Panama. I've got the tickets. How long have you been here? About five minutes. You come right here from the club? No, sir. I made a stop at the Panama Pacific Lines. For the first time in my life, I'm beginning to realize what it's all about. I thought everyone else in this world was a sucker but me. Well, I was all wrong. So I'm going to shuffle myself a new deal. And it doesn't include me. I'm sorry. Well, if you think that I'm going to... Ronnie! What are you doing here? Well, Ronnie phoned me to come. He's sailing tonight. He wants me to go with him. But I wouldn't leave you, darling. So that's the way it is. Well, what have you to say? Nothing. You don't know me any better than that. So you wouldn't leave me, huh? But you did stop and buy these. Even if you played me for a sap, you should have had more respect for the police. Every boat and train will be watched. Darling, you know oh, that I Oh, shut up. I'll get you out of the country, kid. There's a freighter that sails tonight at midnight. You may have to be a stoker, but you'll be safe enough for the time being until this thing blows over. Did you get rid of that gun? I tried to. Well, why didn't you throw it in the ocean? I did, but it came back. Here, give it to me. I'm pretty good at getting rid of things. You wait here until I come back. I can't, Mac. There's someone I've got to see. Well, there's too much of a chance. Who is it? A girl. Are you crazy? Maybe. But I've got to see her. This time it's serious. Where is this heartache? At the waterfront. At the foot of Pacific Street. I'll meet you there. Well, listen, we got a cafe car downstairs. You better take that one. Okay. Well, what's going to become of me? You'll do all right, baby. You know, there's one born every minute. Take her home, Jeff, and see that she starts packing. Keep your eye on her.
Listen, Mickey, you're my pal, aren't you? But you didn't kill that fella, did you, Bill? No, you didn't believe that, did you? Of course not. Look, I've got to see Joan, and I don't want anybody to know I'm here. Sure, Bill, I'll tell her. This is for being a pal. No, Bill, you don't have to pay me anything. Okay. She's a hot, I tell you. Fine, Mickey. Bring it over. Hello. Get me police headquarters. Gloria! Gloria! Hello, police headquarters. Well, never mind who this is. I happen to know that Ronnie Hillier's gone back to the waterfront. Foot of Pacific Street. He's planning on leaving the country tonight. Say, can't you come over and see my surprise? I thought you were going to bring it over here. It's too big, I can't carry it. I'll look at it later. Look out! Mind your manners! Keep out of the way, you'll be stepped out now. You can't change your mind. I don't know. It's taken an awful chance. Giving you the odds. All right. We sail at midnight. Have him there. Right. Hey, Steve. Gloria tipped off the cops. She did? Yeah. You better get Ronnie away before they grab him. We may need a little help. Hey, Mike. We might run into a little trouble down here. You know a couple of boys around that we can trust? What's in it for them? Oh, ten bucks a piece. For that dough, I can get you a car load. Six will do. Send them out the car, will you? Ah, sure, Mike. I'll do that for you. Mio caro. <laughs> Todd? You are not dancing? Of course he is. Yes? Come on, then. Dance with me. Help me to get rid of these fat, eh? Come on, then, dance with me. Someone wants to see you. Mm -hmm. It's a secret. Did you come? I had to. You shouldn't have. Do you suppose I'd be here if those things you've read about me were true? Then why are you hiding? Oh, I can't tell you now, but you've got to believe me. Oh, Bill, how can I? There's one thing you've got to believe, what I told you last night, that I love you. I'm trying to forget last night. Oh, don't. You can't any more than I can. Before they find you. Then you do care. Oh, Joan. Hey, what are you doing here? Stop. You ain't gonna get away with it easy this time. Oh, oh you better go! What a rule, it's your face! Who cares? 
Here's a tough fight. This was Tom Braden's gun. Where'd you get it? I gave it to him. You've gone just as far as I'm gonna let you, kid. You never should run away from the cops in the first place. He thought that he owed me a debt, but... I don't want to be overpaid. I took the gun from Braden. Before you shot him? Before he could shoot me. It was self-defense. Sure. That goes without saying. How do you think it'll go in court? I'll have to take my chances with the jury. Oh, Bill, you're free. Not yet. You probably will be in a couple of days. The heartache? Mac, you gave me my start. And when you get out... That may be a long time. Well, when you do, we're going to take you into partnership. Into part... I don't get you. We're going to open up a place and serve the finest shore dinners on the coast. Say, that's swell. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> 